Hello YouTube! Monday is kicking off and we are kicking off with Demonology Warlock. Stay tuned to find out if you should play the class in 8.1. Also, I already made a guide for all of the Warlock specs, so go ahead and check them out. Demonology Warlock has probably went through the most revamps in the game. At the very least, it's the most revamped spec of the Warlock. For a very long time, Blizzard has been trying to figure out how this should all feel. The spec fantasy, mechanics gameplay and such. Legion did a good job revamping it, but I personally feel BFA is more promising in this respect. Now, the reason I say promising is because, although we had a lot of good changes, we are just not quite there yet. Statistically, Demo Warlock is the least played Warlock spec at the moment. Both in Mythic and Heroic Uldir, it hovers just about in the middle for specs, which is still very good for the least played Warlock spec. This goes to show you that Warlock is in a very good state overall. Now, there is a point I would like to stress here. Even though the classes have different stats when it comes to progression and overall efficiency in the PvE scene, all of the specs are good. I mean, if we look at the Mythic chart again, we can see that all of the classes are performing relatively close to each other. So it really comes down to what kind of players you are. If you play casually or aim to get the curve and just progress with your guild at a steady pace, then you can pretty much play anything as long as you know your spec. If you want to hardcore raid mythic, then yeah, you'll always have to go for the best and that isn't demonology at the moment, unfortunately. However, that doesn't mean that you cannot raid mythic or do high keys with demo, just not competitively. The good part of it is that each warlock spec has a specific speciality. Demonology has outstanding AoE damage so it can really shine and it does in mythic plus. Demo has a very fun playstyle that just synergizes well with itself and once you get those demons rolling, boy is it ever enjoyable. Before analyzing the pros and cons, let's quickly go over how Demo actually plays. Part of our toolkit, we have spells that summon demons. Called Dreadstalkers calls two demon dogs that deal very good single target damage. Hand of Gul'dan calls down a demonic meteor to do AoE damage on the target. From that meter we get 1-3 to three imps, depending on how many shards you use to cast it. The imps will continuously deal single target damage until they run out of energy. Aside from these spells, we can talent into more demons and buff our main demon pet, Felguard, which comes with two spells of its own. A very useful stun and a bladestorm like spell for AoE damage. To summon demons we need soul shards, and we generate shards with shadow bolt and demon bolt one giving us one shard per cast, while the latter gives us two. However, Demon Bolt is on a very long cast time. This is where our passive Demonic Core comes into play. Demonic Core makes our next Demon Bolt instant, which counteracts the long cast time. We get Demonic Core stacks when our demons die, meaning that once they die, we get shards quicker. We summon them faster, more of them die, more procs, more demons, and this is how the spec ramps up over the course of a fight. Also, part of our toolkit is a Demonic Tyrant, our big boy demon that when summoned extends the duration of all active demons and empowers all demons that we have out over the course of its duration while also dealing damage himself. To deal with AoE situations we use Implosion. Once you press Implosion, you order your imps to detonate on a target dealing their remaining damage to all enemies close by. This spell adds an interesting dynamic to our playstyle, giving it a very unique feel. I mean, if we cannot order our pets to die for us, what's the point of having them in the first place? But let's check out why Demo falls short below the other specs. Well, the first thing to note is that the cooldowns for Demonology are just overall weaker. Meaning that, although our sustained damage is good, when it comes to bursting a target, boss or simply a high priority target, we just cannot do that better than Destro and Affliction. Part of this issue is the way the spec works and that it revolves around the ramp up mechanic. For demo, it takes a while to get the ball rolling. You need to cast a lot of demons, they have to die to give you the demonic core procs. And that's when you actually start playing the spec. But until then, it can be a pain to get your demons started, especially since all of our spells need a cast time. Except for the procs, which is why I said that that's when we start our jam. Another weak point that I personally consider is the talent tree. Although we have one or two variations that we can choose from, certain talents, regardless of the niche that they fill, are just underperforming, as is a trend with many other classes. 
but rest assured some of these will be addressed in 8.1 and we will go over those in a second. My last beef with demonology, points raised by the warlock community as well, especially in BFA, is the sacrifice we have to make to get the interrupt. Felgard is just part of our toolkit, with talents that give him more oomph. Summoning a fell hunter instead not only loses us that damage, but works against some of our talents that we pick, such as demonic strength. Demonology warlocks have quite a few strong points to consider. Our AoE damage is arguably the best out of all of the specs. It's easy to pull off since it's basically integrated in our standard rotation. If you want details about how it works, check the guide we have out. I go over the details about how to use Implosion as well. Coupled with a demonic strength talent and you'll pretty much be at the top of the meters when fighting multiple enemies at a time. Our versatile toolkit is also something to consider. We have amazing CC options. Shadow Fury is an AoE stun with a short cast duration on a decently small cooldown, if you talent into it. We have the all too standard Fear, always reliable, as well as Banish. And you can also talent into Mortal Coil, another CC with a healing component. Aside from access to all pets that give us Interrupt, Dispel and such, we have the Felguard with a really good stun option. Add this to our Portal and Hellstones and all other stuffs, that Affliction and Destro has naturally, and you complete a very generous toolkit to deal with most situations. Our single target damage is also impressive. Once we get past the ramp up phase of our spec, we become more and more mobile since we will end up casting instant demon bolts very often. Also, you'll pretty much get instant dren stalkers 90% of the time with the talent Demonic Calling because you will cast more demon bolts. Once again, this comes into play after your ramp up is done. We talked a bit about the weak points that Demo has. Well, some of them are actually getting addressed. Demonic Tyrant is our main and pretty much only damage cooldown, at least for the moment. It will get buffed in 8.1 in two ways. The first being its synergy with Nether Portal, a talent most of us want to use but we can't cause it's shit. Tyrant will now buff the demons that come out of the portal as well, most likely changing our opener once Nether Portal sees play and it will see play, judging from the buffs that it will receive. Its cost will be reduced to 1 shard from 3, its duration lowered to 15 seconds down from 20, but the damage of the summon demons will be increased by 25%. Quite a few changes for a talent nobody uses now, but most warlocks want to actually use it. Another talent that will get buffed is Demonic Consumption, where your tyrant eats your imps and buffs himself. The damage of the buff will be higher, but Blizzard hasn't specified the number. Also, the imps consumed have a chance to proc the demonic core passive, which currently they do not. This is a big step up from its live iteration. Talents buff aside, our pets will do more damage. The damage increase they get from our spell power will be increased further by 15%, while imps will have that up to 25%. Keep in mind that numbers are changed on a weekly basis lately, so competitiveness is a point to discuss once the patch is out, and we have some stats to debate. If you want to know if demo will be the spec to use for progression in the new raid, that's something that we will only know come January. As far as the spec itself, it's my personal favorite warlock spec to play. Its mechanics are a lot more polished than the other two, and the fantasy of it is just amazing. With the majority of the problems with it being addressed, I would recommend picking up demo warlock in 8.1. If you are into a pet type class that uses them to manipulate the fight, then demo is for you. But if you think managing pet and making sure they target swap properly can be a turn off, then you might not take demo's playstyle to heart. A lot of people say that pets work mainly as dots. You cast and forget. Although that can be true when fighting one target, to an extent at least, it definitely works different in most other situations. Your pets can be CC'd, they are affected by terrain and line of sights, and although these all sound like downsides and can be a big turnoff for a lot of people, for me it just adds to the fantasy where I feel like my demons are actually there with me and not just a passive ticking dot. But what do you guys think? Do you find the need to cast all your spells a hindrance on your ramp up? I sometimes do. It gets easier with practice, but it will never be affliction level. 
Thanks for sticking around so far and watching my video. If you have any comments to add, throw them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want more content like this to be delivered on your doorstep. I'm Flame and I'm signing off.